It was a cool summer's evening in the arid desert. I was stationed with some of my fellow commanding officers in our capital city of Zaunuis. The streets were bustling, filled with all walks of life, from every corner of our empire. Most of the folk were predominantly Kaitonan, but there were some Nithyes and some of the Kopreshi snake folk as well. We had managed to find our way through the Grand Bazaar. We were stationed to act as guards for the civilians, looking out for the occasional pickpocket or thief. That sort of thing. My fellow officer, Captain Yusuf, was a ranger of sorts. One who could sense danger from miles away and help us coordinate attack plans. He was incredibly impressive with the skills he possessed, but nothing could have warned him for what was to come. Though you see, Leonis, spirits were high in the arid empire, but there was also an underlining tension that no one could pinpoint. Perhaps it was the cooler nights offsetting the horrid, harsh summer days. Perhaps it was <laughs> a rumor being tossed around like a ball in a children's school playground. In fact, there was a rumor. The rumor being that Thymesia was readied and, and armed to strike us at any moment. Of course, no one believed it. But there was a worry in the air. Everyone felt it. Not even our high-born commanders knew or not whether this attack was a rumor or fact. The possibility of losing everything in a flash in one horrid night was not on my mind. In fact, whilst I patrolled the bazaar, I was more focused on a singular Kaitonin woman. She was beautiful, Leonis. A conjurer of fire and arcane magics. That I know, I know that your church is a bit finicky when it comes to magics, but here in the desert we do not care. Magic is magic. It is natural as it is breathing air. She was entertaining children <laughs> not just children as well, it seemed adults were enamoured by her magical effects, how she managed to weave flame into creatures and even conjure a phoenix. A small one, yes, but still, her skill was there. It was a truly good night, one you would always remember for the rest of your life. However, this night that was brilliant in all aspects, would soon turn to a night I would never forget, and not for good reasons. I followed my soldiers, and we happened into the area known as the Taj, which is a market square. It was a common name given by our soldiers, a sort of meeting point, if you will, for most of the guards to exchange and take roles. Some would go off to sleep, and others would guard the city. At this moment in time, I was on patrol with Yusuf, standing out in the courtyard. We were talking, chatting as we would, as friends normally do. I was looking out across the walled cities of our marvellous empire, scanning out towards the desert. A marvellous sight if you've never been, Leonis. Though I paused, completely still, as what I saw before me. What I saw with my bare eyes shook me to my core. Out in the distance I saw a dozen or more torches marching towards a small village. It was a farming town, just like this Maemorian one that we're standing upon right now. It was called Halreya, peaceful, small and comfortable, and these torches were marching straight for it. My eyes only widened as a plume of smoke started to billow out from that village. The torches were used against the ramshackle houses. It was in a blaze in an instant. I looked towards my captain and said, Yusuf, ring the alarms now! I want my guardsmen here immediately! I shouted at him. He simply nodded in response, and in moments our capital city alarms had begun to run. 
They bellowed out across all of the streets and the townsfolk were in disarray, confused by what was happening, what was the need for the alarm. Soon, my small group of eight soldiers, my personal bodyguard, headed towards me. We all reconvened and we decided to meet the enemy out there in the desert. At the time, I had thought it was a simple desert bandit raid. They had been cropping up recently a lot more, maybe as one of the gangers, but never did it cross my mind that Thymesia had attacked us. I wish I had listened to my heart. Instead of taking mass amounts of resources away from the capital city, I elected a small band, my personal eight. They rode out with me. We took our horses and galloped out towards the torches. As we left the high-walled city, the smoke was worse. It blotted out the night sky and, well, also blotted out the rest of the torches. Initially, I thought there was only 20, maybe even 30 torches at a push, but due to the smoke, I could not see the rest. Galloping further on on our horses, as the smoke cleared, I could see the rest. That number, I initially thought, 20 or 30, had at least quadrupled. It was no simple bandit raid. This was an army. The screams of the villagers echoed out in the distance, and I held my hand up to halt our initial advance. I turned to my closest bodyguard, Hadir. Hadir, go back to the capital city. Take my sigil of the Empire, present it to the Empress, and warn her that war has come to the Arid Empire. Hadir looked at me with a stoic look, but also one of confusion, as he said, Yes, Commander, but who has assaulted us? I simply looked towards the billowing smoke and said, The Church. I now noticed a flowing banner, one of that fabled sun that some of your inquisitors carry. The Divine Sun, correct? Hadir rode back with haste, and seven of us rode out to meet the horrors of the burning village of Haraya. Dust, ash, and sand started flowing in the smoky winds. Our horses became startled, so I insisted we dismount and approach on foot. What I saw, Leonius, was something I never thought your kind or any of the Thymusians could ever possibly do. The entire village was ablaze. Burnt corpses of Chitonian men, women, and even children littered the ground. Their crops turned into dust in an instant as crusader soldiers marched through and kicked down the doors and gutted those who survived. And there before me stood a singular man, surrounded by his entire army. He was clad in heavy and fluted armour. He wore a silver mask embossed with a depiction of a suave-looking human gentleman with defined features. His expression was soured and angered almost, disgusted by the appearance of our kind. In his left arm he held aloft a singular Chitonan young adult, barely even a man. I remember, Leonius. I remember every single word he spoke to me. He said to us, and the young boy, Fear not the pyre, young boy, for soon you'll be born anew. These soldiers, these guards of your capital city cannot save you from your eternal sin. Soon your empire will be reduced to ash, and the word from our God shall spread like the fire here in your village. It will spread through the uncleansed homes of every single Chitonin. I do pity you, my boy. Such a young lad. May the divine forgive you for such a treachery. I watched, Leonius, as this divine inquisitor slashed the throat of this young lad and dropped his corpse to the ground in a matter of seconds. This masked inquisitor turned towards me and simply said, You are welcome to try and stop us, guardsmen. 
unless you are here to finally parlay and submit yourselves to the divine. But if you are not here for that, I'll be kind, and my soldiers will be kind too. We'll give you the chance to run back to your capital city and die in the cesspit of that fiery pit. For you are seven, and we are legion. Go on, tell your empress that her desert will burn, that your unholy and unblessed allies of Vasmana and Kopresh will fall, or they will kneel to our god. You, my boy, haven't got long. The sounds of trebuchet fire echoed throughout the desert as at least eight volleys hurled their way through the night sky and pounded down onto our capital city. I watched as his flaming orbs flew through the sky and rained down hellfire onto our peoples. I could only hear the panic increase. Then it was followed by a second volley, this time no flame but stone. It crashed through our walls, destroyed our fortresses. I witnessed them crack. They weren't here to simply attack us. They were here to siege us. Me and my bodyguards quickly rushed back to our horses and we hurled our way towards our capital city. All we could hear was the innocents screaming and begging for us to defend them. I watched to see people burning, being crushed by stones, Leonius. Remember that young Kytonian woman I witnessed? Remember the one I mentioned earlier? Well, I found her arm attached to her staff that she had. The rest of her body had been incinerated and crushed behind a stone. Our soldiers were completely scrambled by this surprise attack and one of the other commanding officers led me in charge. I was in charge of an army of terrified young men and women, all scared and worried for their futures. Barely any of them knew what a trebuchet was. Lunius, I witnessed countless deaths amidst the panic. I watched as your crusaders assaulted my home, not only in the desert, but in the sea as well to the northwest. To the northwest of our capital city lies a huge palm tree forest. Their archers amidst their boats fired flame arrows. We were sealed in, and we were surrounded by fire and flame. We were surrounded, Leonius. <laughs> 